Well, hello guys. Uh, as promised, I'm going to talk about some theory, uh, mainly one type of oscillator. <coughs> Excuse me. And this actually is going in with uh, the uh, signal generator build. And um, so I thought we'd start on some theory of the basic oscillator and then um, go from there. I wanted to, um, well, talk about probably where we're going here. We're going to probably, uh, in the builds, is build um, the signal generator and the signal tracer. Those two first, I don't know which one I'll start with. Probably the, the generator, the first. And, and then we'll move to building the radio after those two are built. Uh, kind of two things, basically. One, uh, the signal tracer is nothing but just an audio amplifier. That's all it is. There, it's, um, so it, it's really basically the same thing as what's in, your ra in any radio after the detector. The preamp or first audio and then the final audio output. Uh, so there's it's a, a fairly simple circuit but uh, building it and going through it and understanding it helps you understand a radio's audio circuitry. And then as far as the signal generator, RF generator, uh, it basically, you know, that's the same thing as your local oscillator. The only difference between this and a local oscillator is, is more or less that this is a standalone unit running on uh, some different frequencies than, or a lot wider range of frequencies than what your local oscillator would be on your radio. But otherwise, it, it, the circuitry is exactly the same. Now, there are basically, well, there's several type of oscillators, but there are basically three primary ones used in tube equipment. Although there is a fourth one, which is a crystal oscillator, that is used sometimes, not so much in radios, um, but can be used in uh, a little more sophisticated or a little more expensive uh, RF generators. Uh, more or less for, uh, well, things like a sweep generator and stuff like that. They may use a crystal uh, oscillators in there for the uh, marker generators or marker frequencies. Uh, the one that we're going to look at today, and I will be going over all three of them, and then this is actually just a real quick overview of one particular oscillator. I will go in more in depth into it, how it operates completely and everything, but this will be just kind of a quick uh, overview of it. Now, signal generators generally use one of two different oscillators. Uh, they either use this, which is uh, a Hartley and these come in either two, two varieties, uh, series fed or parallel fed. Uh, Hartleys can also be in as a local oscillator in some, in some radios. Uh, more what they call parallel fed, which is just a slight difference in the circuitry. But um, most signal generators, if they use a Hartley, they'll use a series fed, mainly to there are certain cost savings and certain advantages both have but the series fed with the parallel fed there has to be a RF choke put in and it's got to be pretty healthy so uh, a lot of signal generators will forego that and use a series fed Hartley. Another one is the coal pits uh, oscillator and I will do show the circuit of that and do something on that in one upcoming video. 
And then the, the last one is what you see in a lot of radios is a uh, tickler coil oscillator, which is really similar to a Hartley, or the Hartley is similar to the tickler coil uh, oscillator, but we'll go into it uh, in more in depth in another video. Now, some other stuff that I will go over, not in this video, but uh, I'm not planning on winding any coils. I found that I do have enough coils, but I don't really have enough wire to wind or the forms to wind them at this point in time. But I do have already some coils so that I can make use of. Uh, but I will go over uh, how you figure out the number of turns you need and so forth to make a particular coil in a future video when we go a little more in depth into uh, oscillators and, and stuff. Uh, to find the frequency of any oscillator it's just basically this formula here which basically is your frequency at residence of the tank circuit and this is your tank circuit right here uh, is 1 over 2 pi square root of your inductance times your capacitance. In other words, your coil right here, it's inductance and you multiply that times the capacitance take square root of it times 6.28 is fine and then take the reciprocal and that gives you the frequency. This particular formula and I'll show you another one later uh, that might be easier but uh, frequency is in Hertz the inductance is in Henry's and the capacitance is in Farad's. So, you know, it, you won't be working with any value anywhere near that. Uh, generally, you'll be looking at uh, something, you know, a, a variable capacitor somewhere in the vicinity. Oh, say like 14, 13 or 14 picofarads fully open to 400 to 600 picofarads fully closed. So it's a long ways from that. In order for that to be uh, put into this formula, it would be, um, you know, say, the, say at the upper end, say 450, fully closed would be uh, a picofarads, that'd be this, uh, 450 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. The coils, depending on the frequency, can range. They're going to be in micro Henry's to pico Henry's to even when you start getting into frequencies of above 100 megahertz or above you know, about 40 megahertz to on up to 100 megahertz and above, they get down into like point uh, 10, point 20 pico farads. In other words, point zero two. Picofarads, um, and even smaller than that, uh, or Pico Henry's, I mean. So the conversion would have to be converted to use the formula. Now, one other little thing about this: this is just strictly the tank circuit. When you're working with a tube in your oscillator, the actual frequency output is a uh, 1 plus R over RP times this frequency. Now what R and RP is, R is basically the series resistance and it's mainly just the resistance, the DC resistance of the coil. Okay, I mean it's just that resistance that's in that coil if you take just your own meter and measure it. And RP is the AC plate resistance which is generally in any tube manual but it's a pl plate resistance or dynamic plate or AC plate resistance so it's one plus the resistance of the coil over the plate resistance take that times the frequency that you you're looking for now be your actual output frequency now the way this thing actually works is 
basically when the thing starts firing up, you turn turn the unit on or anything, you get a current flow through the tube and into the plate and that comes through CB, this capacitor here, a certain amount will be fed back to L2. L2 is inductively coupled to L1 and will induce a voltage in L1 which will then start uh, loading up and some of it will start dropping across the capacitor and some will start flowing and through this capacitance resistor which is just a grid leak circuit into the grid. As the unit continues running it will start oscillating fairly quickly and this will start feeding in a, a, a signal back to this coil which will be in sync with what's going on in here, the oscillations. Because you got, you're coming back in here. So it's basically a feedback circuit that feeds back into the grid. And it's positive feedback because it's actually in sync. If it was negative feedback it wouldn't be in sync. Now, an analogy of this is like uh, a swing set, a child on a swing. Once you get them swinging to a, a particular amplitude or height or amount that you want them to swing, then you can keep them swinging by just at a certain, at the right time, give them a slight little nudge. It don't take much, and that will keep them swinging constantly at that amount and height and everything. So the swing is basically the child swinging is the frequency of the oscillations and what's going on inside the tank circuit and your push is what's coming down through CB back into this coil which then feeds this one. Now there's very versions of this grid leak. Some will run the resistor across to the cathode and some will run them directly in parallel with the capacitor and at some point I will go over how that actually works. Uh, the main thing I want to do is just kind of get you an introduction to the circuit uh, and I'll work up uh, you know at least the beginning stages of a, of a circuit that's going to be built and kind of show you how it relates to this uh, Basically, this is B minus, and this will probably be depicted more as ground because that's all B minus is, is ground. So, this goes to ground, this goes to ground, and so forth. So, anyway, uh, in a, uh, another video coming up, I will go over more in depth explanation of this and show you some other formulas. Uh, easier to work with than this one and I'll also show you a, a uh, winding formula to figure out you know once you figure out from this what kind of coil you want how many pico henry's or whatever size coil or micro henry's coil that you want you can plug in there and figure out you know size of wire number of turns so forth and so on so the whole total size of the coil and everything and uh, I'll go over that but that's about all I have right now uh, in the next video I'll show you where I'm at on the uh, Hickok and uh, we're slowly gaining <laughs> doing rewiring and cleaning and cleaning and rewiring and it just uh, it's in that process of doing that so uh, thanks for watching and um, and your comments and stuff and uh, I'll see you on the next video